Hi, it's Terry Dennery of The MathWorks. Okay, so the point of this video is to really make the case for the mechanics being on your controller. Okay, and um, I think I already made a really good case for feedback in the previous video. Right? And I deleted these and I kind of showed that without feedback, the instability of this mechanics is going to be, yet be beyond the capability of a feed-forward approach to control the movement of that robot anywhere close to being useful, okay? And, and I'd say that losing, you know, and so doing the opposite thing is instead of deleting these, is to delete these, you know? And so those are the feed-forward signals coming from our robot calculation that's on our controller, all right? And so, Hit run. Okay. And I think you'll see it very, you're already beginning to see it. It's kind of that bouncing, all right? It's the fact that PID controllers ultimately are, well, I'd say that at the very least they emulate quite uh, accurately the, uh, the actions of a very well-tuned spring, spring damper. And for a system like this, this kind of bouncing, you know, will take place. Now to again make the case for PIDs, people do use PIDs quite a bit for this and perhaps at times they're able to use them um, purely and not employ, I don't really know, I'm, I'm a little bit kind of, I'll say new and naive to the true robotics business and I'm sure that if they could do it all with PIDs that they would, all right? And so, uh, but why I'm aware of, you know, because I've been an application engineer for MathWorks for like 20 years now, um, is that there are elaborate strategies <clears throat> for dealing with highly nonlinear systems where you adjust the gains being employed, you know, KP, KID of the, the PID controller, and they call it gain scheduling, all right? And so they directly change the values of KP, KID based on what's the current operational state of the system that they're controlling, all right? So who knows? You know, there's very, very clever people in this world, and there's no question in my mind that one one of them has figured out how to take a system like this and, and, and tune gains that way and to schedule. But to me personally, it's very elaborate, it's very complex, and uh, to, you know, from my perspective, it's, it's very confusing on how you would really be successful doing this. Not saying that it can't be done and that it's not done successfully, but I think what I'm offering is that if you really do have access to the robotic dynamics model and you can put it onto the controller and that all this can take place very rapidly, it's a good thing to do. That's that's really kind of the point I'm making. All right. So anyways, I think I just kind of made it pretty clear that that for the gains, and again I didn't give a lot of thought to my gains, that I have it's it's gonna be an unacceptable performance for this robot. All right. So <clears throat> The other way I want to really kind of address this is I want to go right here. I want to put in a scope. All right. And let's zoom in there. All right. And I want to work with the uh, forearm. And what I want to track is what is the feed forward controller, the one based on the mechanical model? What's it? Um, contributing to the torque and what's being contributed by the feedback loop. All right. And so from the scope, we'll run the whole thing. Okay. And there you go. Okay. So yellow is basically, basically the feed forward control. Blue is what's coming from feedback. And um, from this perspective, it looks like the feed forward's doing almost everything. All right, and that, that, I'll use this word, kind of a poetic word, that harkens me back to a customer visit I did probably like four or five years ago. Um, is a customer that was interested in controlling forklifts. So if he's watching, I think he'll recall the, the incident and he'll know I'm talking about him. But, but here's the thing he said to me, which was, if I'm really doing my job well, that the feedback, you know, the PIDs should do nothing, okay? And I think that's exactly what he's talking about here. 
that compared to the other contributors in the calculation of what the ideal torque should be that should be you know implemented with the controller through your actuators that the the, the PID P should be almost zero all right and uh, to really kind of scale this I will look at this with each in their own separate window I can hit this button right here and I will see that it's on the order of like 10 to the minus 4 where this is on the order of 1 and so I'd say we're looking at something like three to four orders of magnitude is how much bigger this is than that all right so um, what I'll also say though is that this reflects perfect information of what the mechanics is and um, and that well, I'll just say it this way, and it's probably why controls and predictive maintenance, I think there's so much more we can do there. Because in a way, feedback is a measure of the things that you actually do not know. All right. And in this case, what you do not know is perfect understanding what the operational state of the real system is. And that's simply being reflected a little bit at a very small value, 10 to the minus 4. But I'll say is your understanding of the equipment becomes less and less accurate in something like a feed forward, your feedback certainly will become bigger. And we just did the example where we just deleted feed forward completely and saw that, well, we got something happening that's taking place purely from feedback. So pure feedback is, I'd say, a reliance completely on kind of a, a method that's going to, you know, kind of deal with the unknown very effectively for you. It's a really impressive approach. Okay, so anyways, uh, my objective with this demo, this video, was merely to kind of, um, I, I don't want to say justify, I actually want to assert it a little bit more strongly. I want to make sure it's clear, it's really important and incredibly valuable to have a good mechanical model that can be part of your controller. And with that, we'll get a little bit our next video will be, let's get back into this tool, SimWise, and let's show how we got here. You know, and just to remind you, this is kind of what we started off with. We just saw that we had the model put together properly, and we saw a response that's merely, in this case, a response to gravity, uh, where the, the torques sent through the motors were, by choice, set to zero. Okay. So, anyways, next video, we'll kind of get into, well, how did we get here? All right. Thank you.